Hello and welcome to National Focus. I'm your presenter, Mervyn Matthew. Thank you for joining us. In the headlines, the first phase of the new national hospital to be handed over by the end of May. Minister for Fisheries meets with fisher folk of Pottersville and the local government department hosts council's consultation. Details of the headline stories and more coming up. Welcome back. The Dominica Labour Party continues to develop the health sector in Dominica. By the end of this month, the People's Republic of China will hand over the first phase of the new national hospital to the government of Dominica. The direct hit brings you more in tonight's in-depth report. The first phase of the new national hospital is expected to be handed over to the government of Dominica by the end of May 2019. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt toured the new facility, accompanied by Ambassador of the People's Republic of China, His Excellency Liu Kun, and members of Cabinet. Let me first of all uh, say how pleased I am for the great efforts which the contracting firm has put into the uh, construction of the hospital, and more specifically the first phase of the hospital, recognizing the tremendous challenges which they experienced and all of us experienced after the passage of Hurricane Maria. So the work that has been done has been exceptional in terms of efficiency and also the, the quality of work. The U.S. $40 million project is funded by the government of the People's Republic of China and is being constructed on the site of the Princess Margaret Hospital in Goodwill. For Prime Minister Skerritt, this is yet another tangible example of the fruitful relations which exist between the governments of Dominica and the PRC. We believe it is a wonderful way to celebrate uh, the 15th anniversary of our diplomatic relations uh, by the handing over of the first phase of the, the China Dominica Friendship Hospital. This hospital will certainly impact every single family and every single individual in our country as health uh, transcends all walks of life and all ages. The Dominican leader describes the new health facility as a long-awaited investment in the island's health sector. Uh, clearly the existing PMH uh, has outlived its, um, its usefulness and with this new hospital uh, we have no doubt the, there will be an improvement in the delivery of healthcare services to Dominica. There will be also an increase in the services which we are offering to our citizens. The new national hospital includes state-of-the-art equipment and it's expected to offer services not only to Dominican nationals but patients in neighboring islands. So we will very well see ourselves in a situation where we move from our citizens are uh, going out to now people coming in to seek medical intervention. Because there is one service which we will be providing in this new hospital, uh, which is the non-invasive uh, intervention uh, for cancer and all other related illnesses. And I've been advised we may be the second country within the Caribbean region which may have this uh, piece of equipment. Most of the equipments are from China, and also these equipments is the 
standard level of a Chinese hospital, standard level, and some of the equipment is more higher than Chinese ordinary hospital. So I think uh, just now Prime Minister already said that the Haifu, the Haifu is the also not all the Chinese hospitals have this kind of equipment. So this is the second uh, country in the Caribbean region have such kind of equipment. And concerning the MI, MI I think we Chinese government, Chinese, Chinese can also produce the MI machine in China. But the, the MR here in this hospital, we export import from the United States made by GE company. So this is the best quality. With the introduction of this new technology, training will be provided for nationals in the medical field by Chinese experts. We'll be training, we'll be getting help from the government of China to train the doctors and the training technicians on the management of this um, facility. The construction of the new medical facility is expected to mark a new era in Dominica's medical sector and marks another step in efforts by the DLP administration to improve health services. We've always said to Dominican citizens that what we'd like to see happen in Dominica is a situation where there will not be the frequent need of our citizens having to fly to other countries in the region to seek medical care. But this could not and cannot be done with the existing facility. And this is why we have, we have made the request of the Chinese government the, uh, to assist us with the construction of the hospital. Because over time, we have trained people uh, in various disciplines within the um, mm -hmm. medical sciences. And also we have purchased additional and new equipment to provide services to our citizens. And so we have seen a really a revolution in the healthcare services over the last 20 years. Daryl Tip for the Government Information Service. In more news, Dominica welcomed the new ambassador to the Arab Republic of Egypt to the Commonwealth of Dominica. On Wednesday, His Excellency Mohammed Hisham Gamal Eldin Shar presented his credentials to the President of the Commonwealth of Dominica, His Excellency Charles Savre. His Excellency Savre welcomed the new ambassador and congratulated him on the occasion of his appointment. As the first ambassador of Egypt accredited to Dominica, it is indeed a pleasure for me to welcome and congratulate you on the occasion of the new relationship between Dominica and Egypt. I note your interest in strengthening the bonds of friendship and cooperation between, which already exist between our two countries, and also your interest in exploring other means to improve and deepen relationships and multilateral cooperation as we continue to strive for the development of our peoples. President Sarver says he is looking forward to working closely with the ambassador to establish stronger diplomatic relations between the two countries. Since our two countries established diplomatic relations in July of 2010, these relations have been cordial. We are, however, aware of the wide expertise which a country possesses in the areas of tourism, health, education, agriculture, communication and information technology, relief and emergency assistance, and industrialization. It is my expectation that during your tenure, it may be possible to explore avenues in these areas, as well as in water management and irrigation, diplomacy, and transportation. The challenges of nature are always with us, and natural disasters of the like of Hurricane Maria in 2017 and Tropical Storm Erica in 2015 illustrate the special vulnerabilities of small island developing states to climate change. His Excellency Mohammed says he is happy to present his credentials and hold his position. He spoke of Dominica's recovery efforts post Hurricane Maria. Dominica has managed to struggle back to normality less than two years after Hurricane Maria. Uh, but it has not only been Hurricane Maria that uh, Dominicans, Dominica's strong people have recovered from. Dominicans 
have recovered from unjust agricultural protectionism, phytosanitary problems, and the topography that they have turned around, as always, to their advantage. Excellency, we are opening today a new chapter in bilateral relations. I look forward to a new relationship in the fields of uh, liberation and justice. We will strive to cooperate with our brothers and sisters in Dominica to achieve what is beneficial for our two nations and for mankind as a whole. Dominica and the Arab Republic of Egypt this established diplomatic relations in 2010. In more news, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Fisheries, Honorable Reginald Austri, has over, for the, over the past weeks held a series of consultations with fisherfolk across the country. Last week, the Honorable Minister met with fisherfolk of Stowe, and on Tuesday, he met with fisherfolk of Pottersville. The meeting was held at the Forkoli Community Center, and this was an opportunity to hear and address the concerns of the fisher folk in that area. Government has placed emphasis on the revitalization of the agricultural sector after the passage of Hurricane Maria in September 2017. That sector was one of the hardest hit by the storm. Minister Austrian thanked the fisher folk for the hard work they have been doing to ensure fish is always available to the public. The purpose of this meeting really is to hear from you some of the challenges that you've been faced with as, 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 as fishermen and to express to you our thanks as a country, as a government, as a nation for the tremendous work that you have been doing in terms of the landing of fresh fish uh, on the island. Honorable Austri told the fisher folk present that through financing from the World Bank, the fish landing site will be restored among other projects. The World Bank project provides for the restoration of your fish landing sites and for the provision of fish, um, your fishing equipment, including boats, engines, and some um, fishing tackle. Now, that project is now in the process of beginning to unroll. We have done uh, all the necessary requirements, and what we're now doing is we need to set up a project implementation unit. And we're hoping that the approval for that unit would have been sent to cabinet today and then we we'll begin the process of, 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 of beginning to identify and to put the criteria for assisting you as fishermen. The fisheries minister shed some light on the construction of a building by the seaside in Forkole that is being used to sell fish. This is also financed by government. We know in the process we have um, built the structure. Uh, it's now covered. And what we do is to do the separations where we'll give them a small office, um, we'll give them the ice, the, they'll have the icing facility, uh, they will have washroom facilities because in the business of handling fish, it has to be done in a sanitary manner. And so in terms of building back better and moving forward, uh, fishermen must be able to have access to fresh running water so they can wash their fish and wash their hands and wash their tools and so on to prevent contamination and the maintaining of the good quality of fish. So we started that fastly there for the fishermen of, 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 of Focoli, and I'm hoping that uh, we'll be able to do something similar for the fishermen of Pottersville. 200 boats will be built under the World Bank project and 150 will be repaired. The fisheries minister says there are new market opportunities for fish. We have been trying to see how we can get into the French market because Sebastian will tell you that we're doing excellently well uh, in terms of fishing, landing almost a million pounds, pretty close to a million pounds of fish on an annual basis, with 1.5 million pounds of fish. That's what we, we land here from Portsmouth. And these are just records obtained at the fishing facilities. So in Marigot, in Portsmouth, in Fort saint jean and in, at the Roseau Fisheries Complex, but we're able to capture the data. It shows us that we land about 1.5 million pounds of fish every year on Dominica. And that is remarkable. And if you multiply that by $9 a pound, even if you go $6 a pound, then that's about $6.5 million that you bring into the economy on an annual basis. And that is as good as anybody in any, in any other trade. In other news, Dominic joined the rest of the world to celebrate the International Day of Families. This day has been celebrated globally since 1993 when it was first announced by the United Nations in response to modifying economic and social structures that affect the structure and stability of families around the world. 
Minister for Family Affairs, Lady Catherine Daniel, addressed the nation on this occasion. As Minister with Responsibility for Families, I take great pleasure in inviting Dominica to join the rest of the world in commemorating this event. The Universal Peace Federation regards the family as the miniature of the global community and posits that sustainable peace has its roots in the family unit. Further, it views the family as the most devoted of all social units. The International Day of Families, therefore, gives recognition to the importance of the family as the most powerful of social units, one which offers the right circumstances for promotion of awareness of issues related to families and which promotes appropriate action. The theme for this year's International Day of Families is Families and Climate Action, focus on SDG 13. Every year, the United Nations Secretary General designates a theme for commemoration which focuses on a particular motto related to social issues which impact families. The theme this year is Families and Climate Action, focus on Sustainable Development Goal 13 which speaks to taking urgent action to combat climate change and its impact. This theme fits very well into the local context in light of the new thrust towards climate resilience and in keeping with the national resilience development strategy. The local observance of the International Day of Families will therefore reflect government's recognition of the importance of families and their role in national development, in particular in building resilience. Honorable Daniel shared some of the ways Dominica will be highlighting the importance of families. Two weeks of activities have been planned in observance of the International Day of Families. Some of the activities are a movie night and a panel discussion. International Day of Families is celebrated worldwide in diverse ways. For this, Dominica's first official commemoration of the occasion, we intend to celebrate in a big way, with the aim of increasing the visibility of the Ministry of Ecclesiastical Family and Gender Affairs as the main government division responsible for family well-being, promote family togetherness, provide the opportunity for individuals and families to bond and socialize, and very importantly, to introduce the concept of family resilience to the local population. We therefore have two weeks of interesting activities planned for the week of May 15th to the 25th, and we hope to see families really getting involved and as excited about this as we are. Some of the planned activities include a movie night, a play, a panel discussion, and studio discussions. Minister Daniel encouraged all to take part in the activities planned for International Day of Families. My ministry is happy to champion the cause of the family and as the responsible minister, I'm truly honored. I therefore invite every family in Dominica to join in this important celebration. If you're unable to participate or lend support to any of the above mentioned activities, then we ask you to organize your own activities within your communities and even within your families. Remember, the family is the backbone of society and without sound, resilient families, no society can be structurally, soundly, or morally upright. Indeed, a society cannot prosper without sound, resilient family units. You're watching National Focus. More when you return. I've worked in the service industry for nine years and I love it because of the people I get to meet every day. And that's one of the reasons I went back to college, to be better able to serve the tourists when they come to our destination and to be able to learn more about Dominica. I love learning more about Dominica because the more I learn, the more I can share. And I just want to share Dominica with everyone. I'm from Munjan, which is in the southeast of Dominica, and have lived overseas for 24 years. Living overseas has 
made me appreciate Dominica and all it has to offer, like taking a walk in the forest, going to the botanical garden, or even drinking fresh Seuss water. I never thought I could miss green so much. Even as a student, I'm still directly linked to the tourism industry, from something as simple as giving directions to tourists, or even more involved, like an internship at a hotel, or a cleanup campaign with DHTA. As a tourism student, I have made the decision to take my place in this tourism industry. My name is Lucina Nicholas, and tourism is my business. Welcome back. The Department of Local Government and Community Development hosted a National Climate Resilience Consultation for Councils on Wednesday. This forms part of the calendar of activities as Dominica observes Local Government Month throughout the month of May. The consultation was held under the theme Strengthening Community Resilience Through Local Government, which is in keeping with government's goal of building a climate resilient nation. Minister for Climate Resilience, Disaster Management, Environment and Urban Renewal, Honorable Joseph Isaac, stated that the role of government is important if the government is to achieve their goal. Their theme here today is strengthening community resilience through local government. It is indeed a pivotal approach to developing resilience as per the vision of your government of making Dominica become the first climate resilient country of the world, which is a most challenging and humongous task for a small island state. Let me just point out to you, so in your deli deliberation, you will consider those issues. First of all, in building climate resilience anywhere in the world, you must consider four major components. One, financial, resilience, environmental, we should focus on marine and ecological systems. Also, the physical aspect, that is building infrastructure networks and also housing. And finally, the human resource aspect or human resource development aspect he noted that to build community resilience, all residents and citizens must play an important role. He went on to say that leadership of the village councils will be vital in community resilience. Community re resilience will therefore involve the training of staff of local government, the participation of everyone involved at the community level, specifically the leadership of village councils, city councils, and in our case, in Rosewood, the town council. The issue of climate resilience would therefore involve significant training across the board and also the sharing of knowledge at the community level. It would therefore require leadership and participation of everyone involved, not just central government, not just the local government institution, but really the people, starting with all of us here. The Honorable Minister went on to encourage the village councils to build constructive and reliable plans to build community resilience. I therefore like to challenge you in developing practical action plan for actually starting off a revolution of building resilience at the community level. In more news, May 15, 2019 would have been the 100th birthday of an icon and Dominica first female lawyer and prime minister, the Mary Eugenia Charles. The Mary Eugenia Charles became the prime minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica on the 21st of July, 1980 until June 14, 1995. Charles became Prime Minister of Dominica when the Dominica Freedom Party swept the polls in the 1980 election, the party's first electoral victory. She served as Dominica's Minister for Foreign Affairs from 1980 to 1990 and also as Chairperson of the Organization of the Eastern Caribbean States. Eugenia Charles was born in the community of Point Michel and attended the Catholic Convent School in Dominica. Later, she received a bachelor's degree from the University of Toronto 
and a degree from the London School of Politics and Economic Science. In 1949, she returned to Dominica and was called to the bar and began practicing law. In 1991, she was made a dame commander of the Order of the British Empire. Eugenia Charles was also commonly known as the Iron Lady and was dedicated to Dominica's development. Under her leadership, the banana industry thrived and contributed to a boom in the country's local economy. The late Prime Minister was also responsible for the construction of many modern infrastructures across the island and also for the improvement of feeder roads. One of her dreams, which she did not fulfill, was the construction of an international airport for Dominica. She strongly believed that the international airport would increase tourism arrivals to the country, bringing awareness to the nature and an increased economic activity, which in turn would make life better for citizens. I am fortified by your recognition and appreciation of our steadfast leadership. I am sustained by your patience. I will not abandon. I will not give up. I will not give up until our international airport is under construction. Yeah. Until all our major feeder roads have been constructed. Until our rural electrification program has been completed. Until pipe borne water is available in all villages of this country. It requires so much capital to put the infrastructure in, to really set us on our feet so that we can develop better economically. But I'm quite sure that if I can get an airport that can take larger planes than we take now, and it can be lit so we can use it over more than six hours a day, and so we could develop tourism, it would bring a lot of jobs. And I think it would help us economically. If we can get all the feeder roads in for the place in the country, get the water system established, get a, a tourist jetty established for cruise ships, that we would have good figures in employment and everybody earning. And we wouldn't be a rich country, but we'd be able to stand on our own feet. And I, that's, that's what I, my, my goal is. Then Mary Gina Charles was never married and bought no children. A lot of people have asked me why it is I'm never married. I mean, I didn't make any deliberate intention not to marry. But I think the way I've lived, the things I've been doing, have kept me from having any close, long relationship with anybody that would end up in marriage. And really, it would be kind of hard on a man to be married to me because he probably called Eugenia Charles' husband all the time, and nobody likes that. My brother gets annoyed because they, when he's called Eugenia Charles' brother, he says, no, Eugenia Charles is my sister. And I think that it's... I think I've been able to do a better job, quite frankly, because I am... Because I'm single and free, I'm able to do things, I'm able to spend all the time I want on matters of state. And I think that has helped a great deal. The late Prime Minister was born on the 15th of May 1919 and died on the 6th of September 2005. Coming up next, your tip of the day. Today I bring you some hurricane preparedness tip. Secure your home. Outdoor furniture and other objects can pose a potential hazard. Turn off propane tanks and other utilities if instructed to by emergency personnel. Please stay tuned for full coverage of Cabinet's tour to the first phase of the new National Hospital. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook as well as on Twitter at GIS Dominica. From all of us here in the GIS News production team, I'm Mervyn Matthew. Thank you for watching.